screamed, uh, creamed spinach, not screamed, and stuffed a butternut. Summer berry tarts, ding and mohodu are just some of the dishes included in our next guest's cookbook. Her name is Mohao Sishwene, and she is the founder of the interactive, immersive, and vibrant cooking class and cultural dining experience titled The Lazy Magodi. Now, she's uh, compiled the dishes that are favorites in many South African homes in a book titled The Lazy Magodi's Guide to the Kitchen. She now joins us to tell us more about her latest project. Mohao, it's great to have you back on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Now, do you ever sit back and reflect on just the concept of Lazy Magodi and how it's grown and just the number of opportunities that it's opened up for you? Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually mind-blowing. Um, just yesterday, I found out that the cookbook is actually the number one selling cookbook in, in South Africa right now, which is so incredible, so exciting. And you're not the only chef or foodie who's got a, a food book out there at yes. the moment. So that is a huge pat on the back so so true Congratulations. I, i'm just blown away thank oh, you wow. thank you so much what what why do you think um so many women can relate to the lazy makoti the concept behind it i think that the lazy makoti is it's a millennial story you know this balance that we try to achieve between being modern and being african and all these expectations that are still expected of us in this modern modern time i think that everybody can relate to you know wanting to um find our african roots and that's everything that's in this book okay is that what inspired this book that's Tell what us inspired more. the book so um over the course of a couple of years i've been giving these cooking classes and and, you know, I'd listen out to all the recipes that people want to learn. And people want to learn, you know, traditional South African recipes. If you're living in the city, where are you going to go to learn if mom and grandma are too far? So, yeah, I compiled all of these. Um, I like to say in this cookbook is you. I understand that you're modern and that you're African and the merging of those two worlds come together so beautifully in this book. Now, there's so many dishes. I mean, just reflecting on a, a number of dishes that I'd like to learn how to make maguing, yeah. Mohodu. How did you go about selecting or curating which dishes to actually have in your book? Um, like I said, um, throughout giving these classes, I would listen out for which are your favorite recipes. I'd have people DM me, inbox me. These are the re recipes that we want to see in the book. So I really tried, you know, to think about the millennial woman. What is, what is it that you want to cook on a daily? We have a chapter in there, Kumbule Kaya. That's everything that is traditional and so beautiful. I'm guessing we're going to be making this festive. Um, they stuff for weekdays when you don't have a lot of time to make dinner. So there's everything for everyone. I was actually about to ask because you know traditional dishes sometimes require a lot of time just mm -hmm. you know the process of cooking mohodu requires you to literally be home mm -hmm. uh, for a good couple of hours for you to get that perfect dish so share some of the quick dishes because you know during the week we're working uh, mm -hmm. we don't have the time we're tending to the kids or our families um, give us a couple of those dishes that are easy to make but still have that traditional authentic taste mm -hmm. so um, a few of the chapters actually a lot of the book is centered around simple cooking so I want you to not be intimidated I want you to open up your fridge and your pantry and the stuff that you already have in there to use that to cook even the measurements that we use you know people always get confused the ounce and all of those things it's a cup you're measuring with a spoon it's stuff that's easy to make so that you actually use the book i really wanted the cookbook to be useful so that you're not using two three recipes out of the book you're using the entire book all right and what were some of your own personal highlights in compiling this book what are some of the things that you just learned or um you know realized how big this passion for food is um, I think one of the things that stand out in putting this book together was I'm so glad that I stood my ground. Um, you know, um, when I was looking for a publisher, they, I, I would have people feel like, you know, the book is not going to sell because black South Africans want stuff that's aspirational. This is why Italian cookbooks sell in South Africa. And I'm glad that I stood my ground. I'm glad that I got a chance to style my own cookbook because I believe that the perspective that I have, only I could have put in it because most food stylists, if people don't no, uh, are not black mm -hmm. and I'm glad that you know I got to put a lot of blackness in my own book. No, I'm great. I, I'm really um, grateful or happy for you that you actually stood your ground with this mm -hmm. book. I mean you're one of the top best selling. You're in the top 10 at the moment. Firstly, I mean, I just want you to take a moment to reflect on what it means for you and the Lazy Magoti and where you see 
um, this concept growing to next because you've done so many incredible things. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's such sweet validation. Um, such street validation uh, because the cookbook really is reflective of, I feel, the, the everyday South African. It's nothing too fancy. It's nothing, you know, asper super aspirational. It's everything that you are. You open this book and you see yourself, you see your childhood, you see your parents, you see where you grew up, which is what I wanted. Um, and I guess next stop is the rest of the continent. Oh, that is so amazing. Mahal, Thank all you. the best and Thank congratulations you. with all the success that you've enjoyed with the Lazy Makoti. Thank you. Thank you so much. Onwards. Uh, that's founder of Lazy Makoti, Mohal Sessione, speaking to us about her book, The Lazy Makoti's Guide in the Kitchen. Guess who needs one of this? I do. Well, the cookbook is a trusted guide to easy, unpretentious, and delicious home cooking. The meals include spicy chicken livers, pilchard cottage pie, and creamy herby chicken. Oh, she should have bought it to show too because I'm definitely hungry. It's time for us uh, to uh, head on over to uh, the uh, break, and then when we come back, St. Pewit will be standing by to give us the latest in the world of sports.